what is up everybody happy halloween y'all happy halloween. yeah happy halloween happy spooky 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 halloween time halloween time halloween time halloween time welcome to the uncensored processing podcast halloween spooktacular halloween holiday bash he just said spooktacular i'm excited Ooh. i'm already scared gentlemen I mean, yeah, I know, look, look at our backgrounds and, and just look at my face and that's all you need for your nightmare. Wow. I'm kind of like a cross between like a gypsy woman trying to sell you something <laughs> um, and also um, the Green Goblin. Kind it of. all works. I mean, you're going to sell me something, then try to come after me because you're the villain out of a Spider-Man movie. Come on. Yeah. Um, I guess. Uh, so this is my costume. I, I kind of at first was like Hunchback of Notre Dame, kind of, you know, with the. But I'm that's gonna, a classic. I'm going to call myself the Green Goblin. I'm going right. to call myself uh, a guy who uh, obviously doesn't know a whole lot. I, I'll tell you that that probably fits. Uh, that that was my costume. What? I'll be, I'll be, yeah. I'll be a- a vampire for this episode a vampire carlos is a vampire because he bites every girl's that's why it's uncensored yeah Uh, i mean it's gonna be silly i I love it kids watch this you know that right (laughs) (laughs) well kids this is something for you to all learn (laughs) well kids uh Get ready because buckle up and it's going to be a ride. <laughs> well, Learn that, that kid. Censored. No, oh, that was over uncensored. It. That so <laughs> was. We well, just have to laugh and go on. It's all part of it. It's part of the madness. It's Halloween. Come on. We're Man. having this spontaneous day we're going to learn a little bit more about each other. We're going to learn about pro wrestling, Halloween stuff. We're going to talk about regular Halloween stuff. Halloween and pop culture, all kinds of crazy cool stuff. Uh, we have a special surprise coming that's going to change the landscape trick or treat we're gonna have a little doorbell rings and we're gonna knock on our door ask maybe for some candy i'm looking forward to it i know carlos what are your thoughts man because i feel like it's christmas and halloween all wrapped into one yeah i have no idea i'm just i'm just there's there's no hints around nothing so i'm just i'm just going with the flow see what happens that's what you have to do I have to fix this. <laughs> My cape is coming undone. See, he's a superhero and his cape is, he, he's losing his cape. We need uh, the hurricane. We need helms or something. Helms. Helms. There's a hurricane coming through. Yeah, there you go. I mean, a superhero that's in wrestling at all times in with Halloween. He's dressed up. John Cena. Yeah, John Cena. That's who Carlos is because you can't see him. Yeah, exactly. I, I should have known you were going to be John Cena again. You, we can't John. see the guy. <laughs> um. So, okay, so we were talking before we went on here. Carlos was asking us, what was our first Halloween costume? Um. Now, I'm going to make it a little bit easier for us. What is our first Halloween costume that we remember? about that because we've probably had a lot of first and i don't remember my first costume i should ask my mom yeah i don't remember my first either but i i believe the ninja turtles i was a big fan of what they were doing and i was one of them i just can't remember who but i was definitely dressed up as a ninja turtle one year i can remember or recall. and what was was that your favorite costume too or was that just your first like what was your favorite costume too uh that had to be first. one of my my favorites but I don't know. I'm trying to even remember what I, I went as every year. That, that's what's crazy. When you get into your 30s, it's amazing how much you forget. Um, I think I went as Batman one year. Okay. That, that, that was one. And uh, I hope I'm I'm truthful about that because that may just be an estimate. So, well, I'm glad you weren't Spider-Man. I don't think I was Spider-Man. Because I'm the Green Goblin, bitch. I know, and you would have came after me. So I I am thankful I want Spider-Man. But I would have just caught you in the web, and you'd be done. I would have been stuck. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so Batman, you were um, a lot of cool. Dude, that's awesome, man. And Ninja Turtles. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Ninja Turtles rocked, man. Yeah, no, they uh, did. I love the Ninja Turtles. They're awesome. My favorite was the the one that loved pizza. The orange orange one, I think. What was his name? Um... Michelangelo, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the mm-hmm. yeah, I think it was Michelangelo because uh, 
How about you, Carlos? What was your uh, costume? Your first costume you remember and your favorite one? My more, most recent one was when I was 16. I was Frankenstein. Cool. And then uh, my my first one was Bob the Builder. <laughs> 16. Bob like, the Builder. Give me some candy, motherfucker. I'm Frankenstein. I remember I tried going trick-or-treating when I was like 14, and they were like, who are you? And I was like, I was John Lennon's serial killer because I didn't have no fucking costume. They're like, well, what's his name? It's like fuck, I don't know. I feel like every every parent's like dream is to dress their dress their their dress their baby as Superman. That's like the first costume that they ever think of. <laughs> I was um for I was Batman when I was in pre K. I was the um hamburglar from McDonald's. Nice. Oh my god, oh, that's, that's another cool. legendary uh, fixture. Dude, the nineties. I was. Oh, like, sorry, I remember I was a uh, Pillsbury Doughboy. That's sick. That's such a creative idea. I it's mean, neat. Yeah, it, it's creative, like Ant was saying. That was very dope. Like the, like the hat, the hat, and like the the the, the white. Like he gave me like a white robe and all that. And all yeah, it was. <laughs> if I if I keep eating more candy, I'll be the Pillsbury Doughboy. Seriously, oh, I'm goodness. already there. I'm me trying to find the Pillsbury Dough Girl. Um, I will tell you a well, fun, worst, well, a, a terrible Halloween experience. Okay, really quick. This is fun. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll save that segment later. We'll do different segments. Yeah, so we, you, th- you don't want to get all the good we'll stuff get, out right we'll now. We'll get all the, the good later. So we talked about our favorite Halloween costumes, and uh, let's talk about our favorite Halloween candy, and then we'll move on to WWE stuff. Uh, candy, guys, I'm a big candy fan. What is your go-to chocolate and other candy? Because chocolate and regular candy are separate, right? That's how I feel. Yeah, I think so, because you... Like Starburst are different than chocolate. To me, you know, it would be like Starburst, non-chocolate. For for chocolate, it would be Kit Kats or Reese Cups or Reese Pieces. Ooh, see, I'm a big Starburst uh, all red fan. Not mm. pink, but the the ones Not that like pink. punch and like the um, watermelon, cherry. I'm good with those ones. I like Reese Pieces. Not Reese Pieces. I like the Reese Peanut Butter, but the mini ones are good. Um, they are good. Kit Kats are good. Oh, Kit Kats rock. Um, and I mean, Hershey bars too. I, I Hershey. like Hershey's. And I like the, Hershey's uh, with almond. Oh yeah. Hershey's with almonds or, oh, that's a match made uh, from heaven. I mean, it, it's, it's wonderful. I'm, I'm uh, craving one right now. Thank, thanks a lot. I, I mean, it's running through my mind. That, see, I've got a love affair with, uh, with candy. It's, yeah, it's a Jack Burnett fan would think of chocolate right now. I, I mean, I can't help it. We're bringing it up. What you know? It's got to always be called. He loves Jim Cornette. Well, yeah, I do. But I do. I'd like me some chocolate. That's the running gag on Tyler. We have to always mess with him about that. It's perfect. Oh, well, that I, I think it's great because it just love, shows I'm smart. Hey. Eh? Oh, all right, cool. How about you, Carlos? <laughs> See, um, <laughs> I'm not really too much of a chocolate fan, but it, I like like the gummy candies, like gummy lifesavers, uh, like gummy bears, all that stuff. You. Um, but chocolate probably um, no, nah, not so much of a fan of chocolate. I don't know. Um, for gummy bears, are you like any gummy bear fan, or do you like the al? Or are they called Albanese? Because I like the Albanese kind. I will only eat those. I don't, I like the all like they have like there's this one that like comes with like all the colors like red, blue, green. They like all the all the mixed colors ones, and then the gummy dice series too are really good. Okay. <laughs> that fucking doesn't tell no, me much, Carlos. Thing. No, those are good, though. I agree. The gummy laugh savers are. The gummy I, mean, they, are good. I like the cherry one. They, they save like you. Sour, sour Patch Kids are another one that's like fire. The, the watermelon one, though. Oh, my yeah. God. Those watermelons yeah. are fire. Mm, yeah. Why did I feel naughty? Because we're, we're talking about candy. That, that's a bad sign. Gonna get... <laughs> Well, speaking of naughty, we're going to talk about some um, moments in WWE. Uh, some We're going to talk about I just had like a little weird glitch moment where I just checked myself out and now I'm like, wait a minute, I'm glitching. Um, sorry. So Whoa. we're gonna be talking about some of the top uh Halloween moments in WWE history. We're gonna be talking about matches that you wish you could look away from because they were so bloody or gory or whatever that you didn't want to see. And uh, we're also gonna be covering the best Halloween Havoc matches of all time. All this and more. So let's get right to it. And we're going to start talking about a segment from Tuesday Night Titans in 1985. It was their special Halloween episode. Uh, It was pretty funny because you see, like, the set is sort of old school. Um, If you don't know much about the 80s, definitely watch this because it's such, like, a good homage to just the weird 
and bizarre but fun time the 80s were for pro wrestling. So we started out the show with Captain Lou Albano, and he's dressed like a pumpkin. And uh, throughout the night, he's carving pumpkins and just talking about, like, you know, his costume. Uh, we see Mean Gene Okerlin come out dressed up like a rock star with, like, crazy hair and, like, all leather. Uh, he's promoting the new album, the WWE album, that comes out later next month in November um, at that time. And then this segment was really cool. The fabulous Mula came out dressed as a wicked witch with the spider lady with her. And um, it was a funny segment because Vince couldn't really hear her speak. And so he asked her to remove the mask. And she's like, I'm not going to take it off. I'm only going to move it up to here. So the whole interview, she like, anytime she has to talk, she has to keep moving the bottom part of her mask to talk. So that's a little weird. To wow. Um, but it's just vintage WWE stuff. Uh, if you guys want to speak on that, you can. If not, that's cool. We can move right along. No, I'll just speak just a little bit because, you know, I, I love this classic stuff. Now, I didn't get to watch it, but the way you uh, broke it down is hilarious because if it involves anything with Mean Gene Okerlund, Gorilla Monsoon, Bobby Heenan, and has, uh, you said, poppers involved, I mean, then then I'm there, man. I mean, it, it's going to be a classic segment. It, I mean, that's just the, the vintage stuff, so... I don't know if Carlos wants to add his thoughts, but that, that's just some quick takeaways. I, I love that kind of stuff, how they would, uh, you know, dress up as, as even different wrestlers. I, you know, I think that was a lot to do with those segments, too. Totally. Oh, and the, way that, the way that you described it, it seemed like something, like, fun at the time. Like, they don't really do much of that stuff anymore, like like that, more like gimmicky stuff like that. But, but you know, like, there was, like, a time when I, when I was started watching, like, they were mainly doing that just for the Divas. Like there was like there was like they would like have like everyone dressed up like Diva Battle Royals like Halloween stuff. I remember when I was watching like two thousand eight two thousand nine. But then like they kind of like kind of like transferred to like the woman wrestling. And they like once they did that, they stopped doing that type of stuff. But you know that that's a long time ago. Though. I don't. I, don't I remember it that. like this like it the way it's set up is it's like a talk show kind of. So it's like the bump but on TV. And I kind of miss that because what I like about the bump is you learn more about the wrestlers. I like when Stone Cold does the Broken Skull Sessions. By the way, fun fact, spoiler, 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 spoiler. Our Chris Jericho episode will be dropping in November. It's coming back. Don't worry. It's coming back. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Chris be on the podcast. Like, oh, never mind. Keep going. What happened? No, no, didn't, didn't that didn't Chris Jericho go on that thing like a long time ago? Wasn't that like yeah? So basically, what I'm doing is this is a special like um recap series that I do of the Broken School sessions where I watch it and then recap it for everybody. So yeah, it's been on before, but um I haven't released a new episode in a while. So I'm saying spoiler, there's a new one coming out soon. So be on the lookout. Oh, okay, okay. No, no, no. That no, we're that, we're far behind with that. I mean, Charlotte Flair at this point. I'm excited for the new stuff. <laughs> Uh, but moving on. So, yes, great stuff. Great 80s fun stuff. So, speaking of the 80s, we have Primetime Wrestling in 1989. And uh, Gorilla Monsoon is dressed up as Brother Hate, who is basically Brother Love that he's making fun of. He has on all red. He's painted red. And well, uh, Bobby. Funny. Yep. And Bobby I love you. I love you. Bobby the Brahina is dressed as the genius. And so he does his little poetry moments throughout the night. And this show was filled with different matches that weren't really Halloween related. They just had basic matches throughout the night. Promos for Survivor Series, which is coming out the next month. And um, we end up seeing uh, Roddy Piper is dressed up as Bobby the Brain Heenan, and he makes fun of him. Uh, eventually, Brother Love ends up coming to Piper's house, and Piper basically knocks him out. And um, then basically, he's just, you know... Brother Love's pissed. And this was a segment that really got to me. Roddy Piper is talking to the kids, and he's like, kids, here are some tips for trick-or-treating. Make sure you show your candy to your parents before you eat it. Don't talk to strangers. Like, he's giving you all these tips that, you know, kids should follow. And it's funny because, like, as, you know, PG as it is now, you know, I wish they would kind of do something like that again because kids do watch it and stuff. But what do you guys think? <laughs> I think these, uh, once again, it's the classics. I mean, anytime you got a uh, Roddy Popper, you've got Bobby Heenan, you've got, you know, Gorilla Monsoon. I, I think it's just brilliant. It's very clever the way they did these back then. And I'm with you. And I think they they could push the envelope a little bit. I, I realize it's a different era. Even back then, it was different for them to be doing this. But that's what Popper was so good about. Him and Heenan could do that, but do it in such a comedic way and make it seem innocent yet 
underlining that it was the, the typical Hill stuff, that they were, you know, betraying the, the villains in, in different ways. So I'm with you. I, I think the way you described it was uh, was nice, man. I, I want to go back and just revisit some of these moments. Yeah, Piper. He's cool. Cool. Yes. Yeah, I can't do that. Someone accent. who's cool. Carlos. Absolutely. What's up? Uh I know you're a big Roddy Piper fan. You know the the, the tips part I, I get it is he's like like um I guess he was trying to help them out because you know like some like these days people like put like razors and candy and stuff like always show your always show your candy to your parents. So like they can like see like what exactly they're eating, but yeah, I don't know. I don't I wasn't around at that time, so I can't really appreciate the segment like like you guys do, but no, that's totally fine. Listen, I think it's great. I think what you totally said cool. was good. Yeah. Listen, tips for the trade. All right. So we're now we're going in chronological order in terms of like stuff that has happened here. So we're gonna move on to our first uh Halloween Havoc match of the night. It comes from Halloween Havoc 1990, the Steiner oh brothers God. taking on the nasty boys. And for a match from 1990, I wasn't really looking much into it because I was like, eh. Not really a big fan of early 90s stuff. However, this match was actually pretty good. Um, the fact that they used chairs, um, they fought outside the ring, they fought inside the ring, the moves they were pulling off. I don't want to give away any spoilers because I definitely want you to check it out. But um, for early 90s, this is a really great match. I know, Tyler, I'm sure you've seen this match before. Maybe you haven't, but you obviously know the Steiner brothers and the Nationals oh, yeah. grew up with WCW. What are your thoughts? Uh, two classic teams, definitely two uh, unique styles because the Steiners, you know, did all the suplexes and clothes lines. They came from that amateur background, and the Nasty Boys were just in your face brawling. I mean, they wanted to fight. They were, you know, what they betrayed on TV. That You know, they didn't wear deodorant. They often put, you know, the, the pits in the faces. I mean, just stuff like that was just vintage Nasty Boys. So, yeah, that to me is going to be a great match. And to be fair, I haven't actually watched that match. So I, that that's what Check I love. How, how you're breaking it down. Yeah, so believe it or not, I, I have it. it. There's a few, yeah, for sure. Definitely watch it. I know Carlos probably didn't see it. That's totally cool. Uh, he will definitely check it out too because it's such a bomb match. Uh, okay, speaking of another bomb match, and Tyler, you don't really, we, you and I also watch this match too. Another Halloween Havoc match, but this time from 1993, the year I was born, a couple of days after yeah. I was born. It's wow. more October 7th, I mean, a couple of weeks. Uh, and uh, we have the special Texas death match, Vader versus Cactus Jack. This match was just insane from start to end. Um, there was a moment, how I let you take over, but there was a moment in this match for me that stood out above the rest. They're on the ramp. I'm sure you've seen this. Oh, Vader yeah. has Cactus Jack on his back and, like... Just drops him. I mean, it was so stiff, man. Those guys' styles were meant to go together. I mean, oh now, Vader and, and Mick Foley's had some great opponents, but the way these guys brawled the stipulations, what was it, two falls? And they, if they could get up after 30 seconds or something. Yeah, it's like, like that, they have, like, you have to get the pinfall and then they, they can't get up after 10 seconds. Then right. You... I mean, but not even that. And, uh, and Carlos, you'll need to go watch this, man. It's, uh, if you haven't already, the still chair shots were so just brutal. And the way that, you know, Cactus Jack was doing the elbow spot off the rampway even then. That's what's neat about it. you go back and watch his WWE stuff. He he was doing that stuff in WCW, probably over in Japan, well before it, you know, getting established. And the bumps these guys were taking. I mean, talk about sacrificing your body. Vader already came from that stiff background in Japan, and him and Foley were just beating the tar out of each other. I mean, they there was no, you know, give or take. These guys were selling, but yet they were dishing out the punishment, the body shots from Vader. And, the, you know, what's interesting, you gave us the Buried Alive matchup. Well, you could see a little bit of similarities, even though they were still two different situations concerning these matchups because they were bizarre and unique. But you saw the tombstones, and, and they fought down deep in the gravesite. There was just a lot. And to see Vader do a moonsault, a guy that's 300-something, 400 pounds, I yeah. mean, what an athlete, the spring in his legs. And the same for Cactus Jack. This was, a like JR would say, a barn burner. I enjoyed this. It, you know, And it didn't go too long. They fought in the crowd. It had enough to where you were invested. You were excited about it. It was a great match. I mean, it was also a long match. They gave it all for it. 
Oh, they definitely did. Definitely check it out. And what about Harley Race with like that taser or something? Oh, my prod. God. Yeah, that, listen. That was hardcore. Also, the set alone, just for the set, like, you, the, I love when the wrestling shows go all out with the stages and stuff, and this set was really cool, too. Oh, it, it was different. I, I'm with you. It was very cool. So speaking of cool, we're going to take a quick break from wrestling. Um, There are some Halloween movies that are, you know, above the par, above the rest. There are some kiddie Halloween movies. There are some really scary Halloween movies. And there are some Halloween movies that we kind of love to laugh at. So I want to take a moment to just talk about some of our favorite Halloween movies that we need to watch every year. Give me like two or three. If you could give me one that's not so scary, one that is scary, and one that um, you know, you don't have to do one that makes you laugh because I don't know if that's really like a good choice, but just you know, give me two or three options. Take it away, Carlos. I- I'll let you go first, buddy. Uh, so I was always a Chucky fan, like the whole like Chuck- the 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 series, the movies, all that. And that that's always one that I always love to watch. Um, I don't really mind know much Halloween movies. I mean, like scary movies. I guess there's those count, right? Um, like yeah, scary movies. Like, yeah, Scream that counts. Yeah, of course, those are Halloween movies. I would think so, and hope so. I like Scream too, with the with the my finger, right? Doesn't he have like a mess of finger or something? Or I he, believe like, so. He would like call the people's phone, like wait outside, wait outside their house, and then like he'll be like he'll be like look out your window or something, and then and then he'll like end up in the house or something. That's yeah. Scream, right? It was scary. I haven't seen Chucky or Scream fully. So, I mean, I haven't seen Chucky at all. I haven't seen Scream fully. Um, but I heard they're really good. Liv did uh, appear on, on the Chucky on one of the Chucky episodes this week. Like, mm. she, um, she, she actually got killed by him. Killed. Like, you know, like they, they, had, they like, did a whole, like, whole like, fake body. And then like, they, he like, killed her. He stabbed her a couple times. That was pretty crazy. Why, Chucky? Why? I know. I mean, he should have stabbed her with something else. Um. So, oh my. <laughs> what a transition! So, yeah. um, so, what are you doing? This <laughs> is uncensored. <laughs> it's got the attitude years, and it's got a whatever you want. So Ooh. I like a lot of the like Disney Channel. Like growing up, ones I would watch like uh, Halloween Town, which is um all those good ones. But I do like for classic. I like The Conjuring. When well, that's not really classic. Yeah, I guess it's classic now at this point. Um. Conjuring's yeah, good. Exorcist. Well, that's a good one. The Conjuring. Yeah, Conjuring's scary. Insidious, The Exorcist, I like. Um, I think it was it Rosemary's Baby's creepy. Um, so I and also I kind of like I don't really like it's a great pumpkin Charlie Brown, but you know it's cute to see it. Um, but I'm big into scary movies. But I'm the person that will like watch the movie like this, mm-hmm. make sure I'm still able to see. Oh. What? And Carlos is gone. <laughs> Carlos disappeared. Wow. Talking about something not expecting. It's definitely wow. supernatural Halloween. Oh, Ooh. where is Caribbean cool at? See, you know what happened? It's the Green Goblin is turning into a warlock, I think. And I think I'm using my spells to just. That's what's going pass. on. So now the truth is out. It's the, the, the truth uh, is out. See, this the is evil stuff. This is uh, this, this is what we call the Uncensored Blessing Podcast. And this is what happens when uh, Halloween I mean, it's the unexpected. Uh, I'll tell you a movie uh, that you guys need to check out. I know what you did last summer. That was I've seen that before. Is oh, that have you not? Oh, you got to see it. I, I think it's uh, so underrated. It's one of those I grew up in the late '90s. It still gives me chills and goosebumps to this day. Mm-hmm. So that that tells you it's doing its job, uh, frightening you. Also, all the Halloweens, you know, well, not all of them, but at least that original one was a classic. Mm. And as far as ones that make me laugh, it, it's kind of hard because I've not seen enough. So to me, I can only go by the, the serious ones, you know, the ones that. What's that now? I thought Carlos said something. <laughs> That's what's so funny. Of time goes, well, now, well, listen, we are less than a minute away. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's our so countdown. So I'm land the plane. Um, we have a surprise coming soon. I'm so excited. So uh stay with us. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. All right, what is up, everybody? We are back. Thank you for tuning back into the Uncensored Wrestling Podcast. I'm Ant. We got Tyler and Carlos here. We have a big surprise coming up shortly. I'm excited for that. It's gonna change the landscape of the podcast forever um excited things are happening and we're here covering 
our Halloween spooktacular holiday bash. We are. I mean, yes. I'm excited, guys. I mean, it's Halloween. Halloween. It's Halloween. I'm the green. I'm the green goblin. I'm just myself. That's scary enough. Okay. Well, he's a Jim Cornette fan. So there you go. Oh, now another insult. Here we go. Uh, and okay. Carlos is John Cena. You can't see him. Yeah, you can't see him. But hey, that, that's a good uh, disguise, John Cena. Why not? Um, so speaking about disguises, our next topic, uh, our next Halloween Havoc match comes from 1994. It's a steel cage match between the Nature Boy Ric Flair with Sensuous Sherry mm -hmm. taking on um, Hulk Hogan with Mr. T as a special guest referee. And I was pleasantly surprised. I'm not really a big Hogan fan uh, match-wise. I respect what he did for the business. But he really tore down the house of Ric Flair, and they really had a stellar match. Like, this is one of my favorite Hogan matches of all time. Like, I was surprised. They tore the fucking roof down. Um, Ric Flair looked great. Hogan looked great. I won't go over who won, but Hogan sold everything great. Mr. T was in there hoping to celebrate his mother, Um, you know, doing the hands, the one, two. It's very slow counts. Um, But, yeah, if you guys want to talk about that, you can. What do you think about Hogan and Flair inside the cage? I think those guys had chemistry. Uh, you know, Hogan's work rate, he did what he, you know, could do. But that, that's why Ric Flair, having somebody that could oppose him and give him a challenge but could carry him through a great story. And both those guys are, are legends. And I think it's uh, interesting. They were in a steel cage. You had Mr. T. They were trying to recreate some of that magic you would see at WrestleMania as the big shows for WWE. I mean, WCW was obviously trying to capitalize on that but you had rick flair who had been there but he had been you know before that in the territory day so i i, I think it's you know a great match to look at with uh sherry martell mr t and i mean just a lot of those moving parts you just uh laid out there dude it was it was a great match <laughs> over here setting stuff up over here scheming I'm no, the Green I, Goblin. I know uh, he's scheming. That's a problem, and Carlos. Uh, any thoughts, man? Any thoughts, Carlos? Probably not. <laughs> he's like, "Fuck Hogan." Go ahead. Not, not really. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm sure. Like, I like, I like. Um, Tyler said they, they. Um, it's good. Like, they had good chemistry in the ring. Like, they had someone to oppose. Like, like he said, oppose like Hulk Hogan. Like, have good chemistry, and then the storytelling and all that. I mean, I wasn't the biggest Hogan fan either, but. Well, you know, it is what it is. No, that's fair. I, I think you, uh, that, that's a valid point you made. So, yeah, you know, that that's what's cool about these matches, man. The bizarre stipulations. You talked about it, Ann. Yeah, dude. Just crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. Speaking of bizarre stipulations, this is your background. If you're watching us live on YouTube, you can see In Your House Buried Alive 1996, the special Buried Alive match, The Undertaker versus Mankind. See, Tyler's actually a warlock. He was able to tell, tell the future. Uh, uh, I was. You could like see it. into the future. Oh, you could yeah. sing into the future. You think what life would be? And he's gonna sing for you. He, it's the theme song. Sing rebel from a distance. Okay. Um. So this was a crazy match, Tyler. You you take away. Talk about this match. Um. I can just go. Obviously, like we can just say like this is the first ever buried alive match. Wait, when you have to, you know, obviously put your opponent in the grave, bury them. Mankind particularly stole the show. There were some involvement with other wrestlers, but what did you think of this match? This match was uh, around my fandom the mid to late nineties. And I just think about, you, you talked about unique circumstances and it, mankind and undertaker, no matter their history, their careers, they were meant to be tied together. We talked about the chemistry of flair and Hogan, but the chemistry between mankind and undertaker was undeniable. And you could see it in this match, Paul bear, you got to give him a lot of credit because he had turned against the undertaker prior. And he was a big, a proponent of all this storyline, why it was successful is what I'm getting at. It was a slugfest. I mean, the way these guys started, I mean, the way mankind was covered in dirt, they, they brought to the gravesite. Undertaker was evolving. The way he was uh, doing the moves over the top rope, uh, over the guard railing. I mean, he was doing the Cactus Jack type bumps, and we have not witnessed that before. But thanks to this uh, rivalry, and that's why they were making so, you know, drawing so much uh, money and, and having big businesses. I'm even at a loss for words. It was so crazy because it was a great match. And I know it was kind of a, people think of it as a goofy gimmick, but it fit The Undertaker. It fit Mankind. I love these characters. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, talk about stiff, uh, still chair shots and the way they fought in the grave and then having the executioner out. That was Terry Gordy, by the way, great wrestler. 
and then uh, all Triple H, JBL, everybody, Goldust burying the Undertaker, and then the lightning strikes. So I'm kind of giving you the fast version, and uh, his hand raising up, just like in a cinema. It's incredible. It's unreal. I'm getting excited. I'm getting scared all at the same time. I'm getting animated. Carlos, have you ever got to watch this match? If not, you need to repent now and go watch it. I will. I, I feel like I have. A very long time ago, but uh, I maybe like passed through it. But I, 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 but when you said like all those people were like helping bury him, I think it, it kind of like remember helped me remember some stuff. I think I did see this match before, but maybe years ago. Yeah, but Paul Bear turned on Undertaker, right? Like he. he oh yeah, on... he turned on him before hitting with the urn. I mean, Paul Bear of all people. I mean, we we thought he he was with the Undertaker, but we've learned with Paul Bear, with all due respect, he. He's going to be a turncoat when he needs to be. You can't trust these snakes around no. here. No. Uh -uh. Obviously, you can. I, I'm disappointed, I, you know, because I'm a big fan of Paul Bear. Still am, seriously. But, you know, with the storylines, it, it was clever for him to finally get bad because they've even said, honestly, that there needed to be a change. You know, Bear and Undertaker had been this team, and Bear needed to go on managing some heels and, and have a feud against the Undertaker. Yeah, it, this match was definitely one that uh, we definitely want to check out. Now, we're going to talk about one more match before our big surprise. You all get ready. Um, this match is another great Halloween Havoc match from 1996. We have Dean Malenko taking on the Cruiserweight champion Ray Mysterio Jr. It's fun to talk about him because we've been seeing all the drama with him play out. And current wrestling, so to see him in 96 is cool. What a phenomenal match. I mean, these guys put on a star performance. Uh, Malenko is more of a technical wrestler. Ray Mysterio is a high flyer, so their styles were matched up pretty well. It definitely was a good match. And um, I recommend people to check this one out. Tyler, what do you think a little bit? Uh, talk about chemistry. I know we overuse that word, but Ray Mysterio Jr. and Dean Malenko definitely had that factor. And uh, you said it, Ant, one of the greater technical wrestlers, second generation. His father was a great, uh, I believe, was it Boris Malenko? Was was that not his dad? Uh, yes, maybe. Boris was the dad. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, Dean was the man of a thousand holds, maybe more. The guy could just, he could stretch all kind of different ways. And Ray Mysterio Jr. was a great Lucha Libre. Oh, wait a minute, we got a mystery, you know, here. I don't know what's happening, Tyler. Yeah, I, I don't know either. This, we got a run in here. Something's happening. Something's happening. Yeah. Um, what, what's going on? I figured it out. Um, I think we have a special guest. I don't know. Um, uh, let me stop this here. Uh, well, all, all right. So, um, we have a special guest, everybody. Uh, this is a special surprise for everybody. Someone here guessed the surprise. I won't say who, uh, but, uh, go, go for it. Finally, Macho Man Dan has come back home. I called, I asked you about that yesterday, and you fucking said. <laughs> Everybody, we have returning to the Uncensored Pro Wrestling Podcast, back from a long absence, Macho Man, Dan is back, and uh, wow. Mystery Man. What's up? Hey, what's going hiding. on? This is Tyler, this is uh, Macho Man, Dan, obviously Judas has to come on for late champion, and Macho Man, Dan. Uh, Dan is a former uh, Uncensored Processing Podcast champion. Dan, you're looking at the current Uncensored Processing champion in Mr. Tyler oh, Peters. Oh, is here. that so? That is yeah, so. That, I mean, yeah, I, I hate to tell you, but there, there's been a new champion. Mm. Mm. Uh -oh. I don't know, man. I'm just saying now that I'm back, we got some competition, brother. That's all I'm gonna oh, say. I, I, oh, hey, I, I welcome it. I, I mean, I think it's healthy, man. You know, I'll, I'll do business. I'll, I'll do business if you. Carlos, yeah. how are you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> that is a great question, man. How are you feeling? You miss me? We're back. We're back. Yes, sir. Welcome back, yo. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Um, so Dan does not really know what's going on here. I mean, he knows. That this was a surprise. He knows that he was going to join us, obviously, again. 
But this is our Halloween special, Dan. And we're basically just covering, you know, matches and moments from uh, WWE. We're talking about Halloween Havoc. We're talking about cool Halloween stuff. So before we go on with that, Dan, can you tell us uh, what is your go-to WWE wrestler Halloween costume? I mean, I know we probably know who it is at this point, but you Actually, this is going to surprise you. Chucky. Chucky. Okay. Good one. We were just talking about Carlos is that's one of his favorite Halloween movies is Chucky. Yeah. Chucky quack quack. <laughs> okay, Booker I mean, Jay. Liv Morgan recently did a Chucky. I think it was on Raw or something. That's what Carlos just said. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the cosmic connection here is lining up. I love that's it. That's awesome. Say. Uh, okay, so Dan's back. This is awesome. We're happy. We were just talking about Rey Mysterio versus Dean Malenko before you interrupted us. Um, it was a great match. Um, cool segment. By the way, Dan, I'm the Green Goblin. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> I could uh, not originally, but now I can actually see it. Jay? And um, Tyler is... I, I'm scary enough, man. just me, so I, I didn't need to dress up. This is yeah. my costume, so, you know. <laughs> Carlos is John Cena, because we can't see him. Um... And Dan, you are going to be the the black square box. <laughs> See a black square. This I is like awesome. It. I love it. So, um, let's keep going onwards with our Halloween Havoc match countdown. Uh, Dan, don't feel free to jump in if you want. Don't feel like you have to. Um, I know you haven't watched some of these matches. And that's cool. So we're covering Halloween Havoc 1997 Harlem Heat versus the Outsiders with Sister Shirley. Sh- Sister Shirley. Hi, Sister Shirley. Um, so Sister Sherry, uh, this is a cool match. I'd never seen it before. I was excited to finally see the outsiders and tag team action in WCW. I hadn't really seen them together. Um, Harlem Heat looked great too. Tyler, again, you are a big WCW fan, so I'll throw it to you, sir. Uh, what are your thoughts on this this situation here? Yeah, this was a great period because you like you said, there was the outsiders, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, Harlem Heat was great, Stevie Ray Booker T and, and then Sherry Martell. That elevated them because she's one of the greatest managers, uh, was Sherry Martell looking at her history. And I love how, you know, Booker T and, and Stevie Ray worked well. I mean, Scott Hall was a great worker. We we all know his legacy as a wrestler. Kevin Nash was a a great big man, and uh, shout out to Kevin Nash, who's going through a, seriously a, a rough time right now, losing his son. So it, it's really nice to see these matches. It, it brings up the nostalgia factor. It's just fun memories for all of us. So I, I'd be interested to hear everybody else's uh, impressions about this match, if they've got to see it, because it, it's wonderful, man. I, I love this period of uh, wrestling. I feel like I unfortunately have never seen the match, so I can't really comment oh, on okay. it. Okay. That's well, all right. That's all, all right. right. Hey, that's cool. How about cool. you, Carlos? Yeah, me neither. I haven't seen the match either. It was pretty good for attack matches. It, pretty good <laughs> it was a good match, match. yeah. Um, okay, so we'll move, we'll move right along then. Um, <laughs> next, we have uh, from Halloween Havoc 1997, Rey Mysterio versus A. Greer, another classic match. Um, if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. And Rey used that pink gear that uh, Seth Rollins used that one time. Yes, sir. Yep that that gear. I think we we I think me you and Dan did the SummerSlam watch along when he had that uh yeah that, um that gear. It was a great match. I mean, what really Which can one, you say uh, about it? Seth versus Dominic or the or the Ray versus the Ray versus Eddie Guerrero match. I mean, God, you have two great legends. The first time they ever actually met, singles one on one. I mean, really, is- what can you say <laughs> about it? No, I agree with you. Classic match. And it the was, gear oh. was ma- wasn't it mask versus title? Yep, yep. And during the match, the the mash during they did the mash. They did the monster mash. It is oh. Halloween, by the way. Monster I mean, mash. Um, it is during the match. They they tra- Eddie was like tearing at the mask and stuff. Uh, very serious moment too. He cried after the match. Rey Mysterio and. Uh, but yeah, I mean, listen, this match is so good that we're not even going to talk about it. Just watch it for yourself because it is just so great. Definitely check that one out as well. Um, we're going to move right on along to matches again that you kind of want to look away from. In Your House, Bad Blood, The Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels, Hell in a Cell for the first time ever, the debut of Kane. 
crazy stuff, some scary stuff. I mean, if you're a fan of the audience and you don't know what's going on, you're obviously super invested in it. But uh, I'll throw it to you, Tyler, first. Uh, you've seen this match, I'm sure. What do you think? Uh, it was another great match ahead of its time. The the inaugural Hell in a Cell match in St. Louis, Missouri, with Kane's debut. Uh, you know, Shawn Michaels, Undertaker. Shawn was being more the heel, but yet you cheered him. Uh, it was DX attacking Undertaker was the storyline going into the matchup. Uh, getting to see Paul Bearer, you know, involved again later on is always great. And, uh, yeah, you talked about it was scary because The Undertaker, you know, uh, Shawn Michaels had the spot where he dove through the ropes, and you, you had a lot of moments. The cameraman getting knocked out, I'm, I'm sure, was planted, was interesting. And, and just the way they could use the cage was amazing. They, they had to be on offense and defense like a sport, the way they fought on top of the cage. Michaels falling off onto the table. before This is before Mankind taking the big bump, and JR was already in that mode. So the emoting, even from commentary, was classic. So like you said, and there, there was blood. They fought on the outside. Kane rips the... Uh, the uh, cage door off, and then he tombstones the Undertaker. Undertaker's expression sold at the psychology, the demeanor, and then uh, Michaels ends up winning the match. He survives, and I like how he went at it alone, but he still showed fear because he's facing the Undertaker inside not only the ring, but this uh, hellish structure. For real. Well, it is called Hell in a Cell. So. Absolutely, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. No but doubt. no, it was. I gotta agree with what you said. I mean, it was an amazing match, especially considering, as we, as you said, it was the first ever Hell in a Cell. It wasn't just like, oh, we've already seen this a hundred times. It wasn't like they used it at a pay per view before this. No, this was the first ever match, and no one knew what to really expect from it. So, I mean, witnessing it for the first time and how they actually used the structure to someone's advantage just was amazing. No, it was. I, I'm with you. I concur. I, I think there. I mean. You could break this down, and it still there was so much excitement and action through it. it it's hard. I mean, even if with good analysis, it, it was awesome. Definitely, Carlos. Have you? I'm sure you've seen bits, or maybe you've seen this whole match, Undertaker and, and uh, Shawn Michaels. Have you ever checked it out before? I haven't seen it. No, never. Check that really? out, dude. It's a bomb. What's it's the, a must. I've seen like from 25, 26, 26, and like the other one, but I haven't seen like back then, no. Check that one out. That was a really good one, man. Um, Definitely. for sure. That's a you know, it's not really a Halloween one, but you know, it's yeah, I really it's, I never it's... went like went that far back before like watch matches from back then, really. I've always like just kept from where I where I started for like to keep going. You know? Yeah, the the stipulations of fit, like you're saying, Ann, it don't don't always have to be Halloween themed. I mean it would fit into Halloween though, because of, of Bad Blood Kane's character, my goodness, the Undertaker. Yeah, I remember when Jr. said, "Look at the size of that man. He's nearly the same size as the Undertaker." Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that was a classic line. And to be honest, I don't know if he wore extra lifts or what. They were both big men, but it looked like Kane may have been just a little bit taller the way that yeah. the cameras had. So that was interesting. Definitely, I agree with you guys. I um um. Is this the match when Kane debuted. Yeah, yeah. This was the oh. this was the match where Kane literally ripped the door off its hinges. I remember that part. I don't remember the map, but I remember that part that he 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 was like standing face to face with him, and he's like, "That's gotta be his brother," or something. That's gotta be Kane. Yeah, that's, that's the line Vince be used. Kane. I think I think you no. I thought it was, I was about to say I think that was Vince on commentary who said that, but no, that was Jr. Oh, was it Jr.? Okay, I I couldn't remember, but I, yeah, you're right. One of them, but yeah, Jr. Probably was. That's true. All right, let's move right along. We're going to take a quick break from wrestling for a minute. So there's a lot of spooky songs out there in the world. You know, we here at the Other Surprising Podcast, we like to sing, obviously, Tyler and I. Yeah, we, we do. We we try. I mean. Boogie, boogie, get down, get down. <laughs> um, I don't know if you want to hear that, but um, we do it. So uh, let's talk a little bit about some spooky Halloween songs. Obviously, Ghostbusters. Who are you going to call? That's Ghostbusters. Yep. Da, da. The kids were actually doing that today uh, during gym. It was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> how about um, I always feel like somebody's watching was me. Was that Rockwell? Yes, sir. <laughs> and I have no privacy. Whoa. Um, thriller. Yeah, Thriller's got to be up there. I mean, if if it's not, then I don't want to live in this world. I'm sorry. Yeah, it deserves to be on there. Night. Do, 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 do. Before the beast of that strike. Okay, how about um? There's also another good song, uh, the Monster Mash. 
Monster Mash. What about Another Werewolves iconic. in London? Yeah, Warren Zeva. I, I love this. I have to listen to that one. Oh, gosh. You Werewolves in London. I should check yeah. it out. Let Warren me... Zeva. Werewolves in London. Mm-hmm. We're going to hear this live, my live reaction to this song because I've never mm-hmm. heard it. Werewolves in, in London. London. Yeah, classic. Okay. Let's see. Oh, I know this song. It sounds like Sweet Home Alabama. I just sound like Sweet Home Alabama. <laughs> Uh, All right, I can get down to that boogie woogie. I like that. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun song. No, for real. I listen. Anytime music is involved, I could get down to it. What about the Halloween theme song? Like that song. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. Oh, that it's got to be. Yeah, just that Santa piano rhythm is awesome. And then the I mean, when you hear it, you know exactly where it came from. Mm-hmm. Uh, Exorcist is like going to dun 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 dun. Um. But uh, for me, I also like um in the room where you sleep. It's a, uh, it's sort of like a, it's not an old song. It, it sounds like an old song. It's from the Conjuring movie. It's pretty creepy. It's kind of mm. spooky. But uh, go ahead. No, I have to listen to that one. Speaking of review matches, that, that's what's neat about it, even with music. that That's one I need to go check out. Yes, it's a good one. Good, 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 good one. Okay. So speaking of good ones, let's move right along here because we got a whole lot more to cover with not a lot of time. So uh, another moment that was kind of creepy uh, from Raw 1999. Uh, I think it's like the night after Backlash. The Undertaker kidnapped Stephanie McMahon to marry her on top of a symbol. Of a <laughs> um, but Sonko Steve Austin comes out to make the save. But the reason I was so creepy was he kidnapped somebody and it was the man and it was the boss's daughter. Um, what do he you was forcing her to marry him, bro? You I sure mean, that's was. that's Would something. You marry the Undertaker? I wouldn't. It's creepy. Sign sure. me right up. <laughs> How about you, Carlos? Would you marry the Undertaker? No, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what breakfast is like with him in the morning, sir. Good morning. He probably like, rises. That's probably <laughs> he it. probably yeah. sits up in bed. Yeah. He does yeah, the, the grill on fire. Yeah, he does mm-hmm. for sure. That's, that's Kane. That's Kane. What the fuck? I'm telling my under there. Undertaker that's- does the lightning bolts and shit. Yeah. So, hey, this is a cool moment for history, like reasons, you know. On Stephanie is the boss's daughter. Undertaker's creepy. We're too Stephanie. Um. So, I mean, there's really not much to add. If you want to, you could add to it. But it was just creepy to see the Undertaker just kidnap somebody yeah, yeah. It, it was very weird i mean especially... wasn't wasn't this during the ministry of darkness era yes sir that's right yeah. yeah it was and then it was and then they joined the corporate ministry and then it was apparently vince mcmahon who was behind it all yeah he's like it's me austin it's me you know or something it's like me that. all yeah. along yeah yeah there you go yep and my sort of background. so yeah. from the way it kind of sounds is he kind of hired the Undertaker to marry his daughter. That's a little weird. Boy, that's a little sick too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I mean, hey, this is also coming from the man who wanted to have a storyline of impregnating his own daughter. So, I mean, you can't really expect much from him. Hold on to your hats, fellas. Yeah, that that's definitely out there, and I, I'm glad that didn't make it to TV. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but yeah, we get the Katie Vick storyline. Mm. Oh, that was terrible. Yeah, that was horrible. <laughs> Well, yeah. this wasn't horrible to me. We are going now to a couple years ahead. SmackDown from October 31st, 2002. Now, uh, Tyler here takes his list. We're skipping some of this stuff, Tyler, all right? We're just moving around. Oh, that's on. fine. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's your show. We're skipping Halloween Havoc 1998 with Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior. Oh, that gosh. Yeah. awful. We, we, we might as well just forget that even happened. Shit, you want to forget that happened. Yeah. Um, but I can't forget about this match. October 31st, 2002, the special trick or treat match Dawn Marie versus Tori Wilson. Dawn is dressed up <laughs> as a policewoman. 
Tori is a sort of like warrior dominatrix. Uh, whoa, whoa. I'm, a, I'm already getting distracted and visualizing this thing. Uh, chocolate. Uh, I think this is our favorite match, or at least for me. Um, was uh, it pudding or what was it that they were fighting? It like I don't care what it was. They could cover themselves in all kinds of things. That'd be good with it. I made like a little oh Instagram. I made a little yeah. Instagram. And this thing. is why it's uncensored, people. It should, oh, it is. It should yeah. have heard earlier, so you didn't watch. You're you're seeing my oh. real side, which is not very <laughs> okay, professional. Okay, okay, Mickey James from <laughs> WrestleMania. All right. Yeah, that's the whole point. I love it. Yeah, um, I loved everything about this match. Uh, <laughs> I better not say any more. I've already got myself in trouble, but it was it was well worth it. Uh, I think uh, Tyler's gonna have to go make a quick change. Um, so <laughs> uh, commercial break. No, I'm excuse me. Uh, I'm a piece of shit. All right, we we're right along. Uh, also during that night, we saw the debut of John Cena. At as vanilla ice which is kind of cool rapping very cool we <laughs> um we also Wait, saw wasn't um, that the night no i was thinking of eric bishop someone kissed stephanie if i remember yeah, that no, was, it was him he was dressed up with a Vince McMahon mask that was a great yeah. moment oh my gosh that was good it was uh, i mean i wouldn't say it was a good moment but well i mean just for it. what it needed to do is what i'm coming at it from yeah, yeah i, guess that's I didn't know who it was under there um that's what she said <laughs> um so we're gonna move quite along there's a lot of matches that that will i'll add here in the description but we're gonna move for time's sake going a little bit we're gonna move to a match that took place in 2004 backlash cactus jack taking on randy orton and this is sort of like randy orton's match that sort of made him I don't yeah like star but mm-hmm. made him, you know look like a like serious contender i'm sure we all a million have bucks we'll, let's all talk million. about it quick Jump right in. Go ahead. No, you guys go ahead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, all I really remember from this match, I'm pretty sure this was the match at least, was when he RKO'd McFoley into the thumbtacks. If I'm correct, that's this match. No, totally. That is exactly what happened. Okay, yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to make sure. But I, I remember hearing a story time about um, Randy Orton and how he won the thumbtacks, and then he realized, Oh shit! I gotta go in those fuckers. So he actually, apparently, from what he says, he took a uh, one thumbtack and he laid down on it. And when he when he laid down on it, he felt how bad it was. He's like, "Oh shit!" And this was like the night before, so he tried oh, to God. he tried to get it off. He's like, "No, I don't want to do this anymore." But then Mick's like, "Nah, you gotta go for it. You gotta send it." So he ended up doing. It. He's like, "Well, that actually isn't that bad." When he did it, he was like, "Yeah, shit, that hurt like hell," but. It wasn't as bad as I was anticipating it. Yeah, I mean, that was a brutal cool. match. Yeah, what you guys were saying, that, that's all I will add. It was uh, anytime you got Mick Foley involved, and I mean, Randy Orton will take it to the next limit if he has to, especially with uh, the opponent like Mick. Uh, it, it was hard to watch. It was. I mean, you had the thumbtacks. You know, those spots were not pleasant on the eyes. No. I, and this was one of the matches that really set him up for later on when he was going to go against like the undertaker and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Carlos? Did you check this one out? I didn't watch the match, but I know like it made Randy Orton's career. Like he, it, it uh, it, it made him like, like you said, like a real contender to everyone, you know, like the big stars and stuff. Well, Carlos, this is going to be your moment to shine, sir, because uh, you actually watched this match recently. Um, You don't have to cover it, but we're talking about SmackDown from, we're jumping way ahead in the future people. Uh, 10 years into the future, actually. From SmackDown, October 31st, 2014, Cesaro taking on Dean Ambrose in a trick or street fight. Carlos, <laughs> what did you think of this match? So this is a time when, like, when the when the field, like, like they didn't just break up, but, like, they were they were starting, like, they were still, like, like pretty much going on their own. Um, And the, they were there, this was, like, after, after Hell in a Cell when Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose had that, when I had that Hell in a Cell match. Um, it, it wasn't really, it wasn't really a, a story match. It was just like, it was just like something for, just something for, uh, the, the Halloween episode of SmackDown. It, it was, was a good match. It was, it was, it was like, there was pumpkins everywhere. They were like bowling for apples around the ring. There were, there was candy. Every, there was like, there was so many great mm-hmm. spots in that match. There was time like that they, uh, um, Dean had like hit a drop kick from inside the ring and then, and then, and then it threw Cesaro over the announce table. Um. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a good match. And the ending ended when he hit a dirty deed with the uh, with the pumpkin on on uh, Cesaro's head. He hit it twice actually, and then this is and then the pumpkin broke, broke in half. And then and then it, yeah, 
It's always fun to get dirty D's on top of a pumpkin. Yeah. Yeah, never good. Never good. Um, okay, let's move on. Um, so we have two more matches to talk about here, and then we're gonna uh give you a little another bit of news quick. Uh so we're gonna talk about the boneyard match from WrestleMania. I think was it 31, 32? I don't know. It 30, was- like 36. For the Boneyard match? You're talking about like WrestleMania 36. Oh my god, yeah. sorry. Goodbye. Oh, that's true. Yeah, th- th- there's been so many. Yeah. <laughs> there's been so many. WrestleMania 36. You mean buried alive matches? Because like Boneyard was essentially just a bone was a buried alive match, but this one was more cinematic because you know this was like right when COVID happened. Right. They had yep. to shut down everything. Yep. This is the one. This is Undertaker versus AJ Styles. What did you guys think? I mean, it's Undertaker's last match. Uh quick no. thoughts. I, I thought it was great. I mean, for cinematic matches and seeing The Undertaker right in kind of, the, you know, on that Biker gimmick too and, and seeing uh, AJ and, and Taker, I mean, another guy kind of like Michaels that could kind of help Taker at this stage in his career. I mean, it was great. I, I think it accomplished what it needed to do, and I, I can't wait to hear what you guys uh, have to say about it. I, I enjoyed it, believe it or not. I did too. I, I agree. I I... I enjoyed it. I thought it was a great match, especially for cinematic matches, which at the time weren't very common because, again, this is like when it first happened. We expected a whole crowd, everything, nothing happened. So when we expected the match, we're like, I wonder what they're going to do for this. And then, because previous cinematics, the skimming, I can't speak, you know what I'm trying to say. The the special matches, they never really happened much. You know, we had uh, Randy Orton's House of Horrors match with Bray Wyatt, but I mean, it was never like the Boneyard match, and when we saw it, it really it set a bar for the future ones. So, no, I did. I, I'm I'm concur with you. I thought I thought it was uh, fantastic and even phenomenal, uh, fitting for AJ. Stone. <laughs> Dare he say? Yeah. And then so, Undertaker but, uh, with the H he was doing some of the spots. I mean, God, <laughs> it really worked very well for him. Though I do hear that uh, I forget who it was, but apparently they had to stop the match midway through. They had yeah. a specific match. They had this like they had to stop the match midway through it for God. I I don't remember. I think it was because someone got cut open or something, and they had to stop production of it for like I want to say it was like an hour or so just to like let the like the guys like heal or whatever. I don't really know the whole story. That's just what I heard. But I mean, still, you really couldn't tell, and it really no, not amazing. at all. I didn't realize that. Yeah, see, see, I'm so glad to learn from you guys because that's something I didn't know. Carlos, how about you? Um, about the Boneyard match, right? The uh, Thursday Main 36. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, it was it was a good match. Um, it was a good way to send off Undertaker like off into the like how he drove off with the motorcycle at the end, like to into the darkness. Um, it was a good yeah. way to send him off, I think. Um and. And apparently they're they're really good friends in real life, so like they've been really close for years. So I think that was like maybe a perfect opponent for him. Uh, but yeah, it was a it was a good match. I enjoyed it. It was a good it was a good way to end off uh, WrestleMania Night One. And it was definitely a good way to end off the Undertaker's career. Yes, for sure. Um, okay, so listen, now I feel like a little Polish chick that's rolling around, being like, "Hey guys, I was I was for stuff." Um, okay, <laughs> um, so. <laughs> Listen, we have had a fun time. I know I said we have one more match to cover, and we do, but again, that will be listed on the list here that we're going to have for you guys. We're filming this before Halloween, so this is this is just some fun stuff that we're doing here, some cool bewitching stuff. So um, we still have some time, but before we go, um, I want to talk to you guys a little bit some more about some stuff. Dan is back with us. Dan will be joining us for every Raw SmackDown pay per view recap. He is going to be back in attack. Carlos obviously still here. Tyler is still here. Obviously, we do our Azure years together. Tyler is going to be continuing to join us for all our shows um, whenever he is available, of course. Um, and I want to tell you guys a quick couple of stuff coming around. We have new Broken School series episodes coming out. Um, Broken School series, Broken School sessions episodes coming out. And um, I guess I want to say to have a good Halloween. You have know, a scary one. Have a scary one. Don't eat any candy um, unless your parents, you know, look at it before. Um, and, uh, you know, make sure you watch your favorite movies. 
Enjoy your time. Be safe out there. It's a crazy world. But before we go, I have one last thing I want to say. Now that we've talked about Halloween. Well, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Let's wrap it up quick. Tyler, give us quick final thoughts while I do my little sh- Seville. Go ahead. I think it's been a fun episode, gentlemen. Uh, I'm so happy, Dan. It's uh, great to meet you, man, and, and have you return. I think Halloween is one of my favorite holidays. I don't know about you guys, but it's fun reliving some of these great matches, mm-hmm. moments, talk, movies, music, and just pop culture. So credit to Aunt Carlos, yourself, and, and then you, Dan, being the mystery guest. I thought maybe it's Chris Jericho invading with the Judas song. <laughs> I didn't know that was, that was clever. Uh, and Thank we, you. So it's awesome, man. So and I love that we can create these backgrounds and, and we're getting uh, more voices. Uh, it's all a good thing. So I, I'm just happy to be joining you guys. Thank you for involving me in your network. And it, it's been a lot of fun recapping these things. So Killing it. rock on. Yeah, absolutely. Rock on. Carlos, rock give on. me your quick, uh, quick, land the plane, sir, quick. Say uh, your thoughts. It was a great show. Good surprise. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to keep going. Yes, sir. Dan, welcome back. You are the surprise. Yes, I am. I'm very think? glad to be back, guys. It's been a long-awaited return of mine personally. I look forward to uh, having a new voice around and having, of course, the old ones, you know. So I look forward, and I did not know the whole episode, but I will definitely go back and listen to it so I know Land the plane, Dan. Land the yeah. plane. Guess what, guys? Now that we're done with Halloween, we kiss up for Christmas. Oh, ah, we're yeah, God. Christmas. We're we're transitioning to Christmas now. Ooh, Let's get it through Halloween first. Yet. Thank you guys for joining us. Guys. Have a good, happy Halloween. Um, we will be seeing you soon. We turned up. We had fun. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Dan, Tyler, Carlos. Stay safe. Happy Halloween, guys. Enjoy. Bye. Bye.